Guys, have you ever had the experience of stalking your crush on Instagram and she's all like, Oh my god, new hair color. Heart emoji. And then she's like, Hashtag redhead shave more fun. Wait, what? Oh, redheads have more fun. Huh. And she's like, Hashtag no filter. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Aw, oh, hell nah. Aw! Oh. Girl, let's get you some filters, alright? Now, when we talk about filters, we think about Instagram. Or maybe more advanced, we think about Photoshop. But as true engineers, we only serve one true God. Now, as we get into MATLAB, I can of course load in the original photo with color. But for the sake of explaining how filters work, I'm gonna convert this photo into grayscale using the MATLAB function RGB to gray. Now let's crop and zoom in to the pimples. And as we zoom in, you can see that the pimples start getting pixelated. And that's right, digital images are essentially made out of square pixels. Now let's crop and zoom in again. And this time let's crop out a 10 by 10 pixel image of two pimples. And Jesus, do you see how hideous these pimples are? Now to see these pimples in their true form, let's not use the image show function in MATLAB. Let's just let MATLAB display it as it is. And you can see in the command window, the image is essentially a 10 by 10, 8 bit, unsigned integer matrix. Now let's put this matrix in a chart and side by side to our photo for us to better visualize. It's apparent that the pixels representing the pimples correspond to the values inside the two red windows, and white pixels correspond to the number of 225. Now from here, let's start a crash course on grayscale images. As I said, the true form of grayscale images are 8-bit integers. That means that we have 256 shades of color, each corresponding to a number from 0 to 225. We define 0 as pure black and 255 as pure white. And the colors from number 1 to 254, we call it the 254 shades of gray. Now let's get back to filters. Let me introduce the idea of the kernel, which can be also called the mask. And I feel like the mask is a way more descriptive and also way more suitable name for this thing, and you will see why in a bit, as I demonstrate. Generally, the kernel is a smaller matrix than the image, and it doesn't really have to be 3x3 three three, like it shows on the screen. It can be 4x5, 2x2, 10x10, whatever. This little thing right here is basically your filter effect, and the elements inside this matrix is going to determine what kind of effect your filter is going to have. We apply this kernel mask onto the image using a method called convolution. The first step of convolution, which is kind of weird, is to reflect your kernel about the origin. Now you may ask why do we do this? And let me just say there are a lot of well-known often used kernels out there like Gaussian or mean or normalizing. A lot of these kernels are symmetric already, thus will not change even if you do a reflection about the origin. There is also the second method of applying a kernel called correlation. Correlation and convolution are almost identical, except that when you do correlation, you don't have to flip your matrix about the origin when you start off. And you gotta know, the difference of using convolution and correlation is a whole other topic itself, which I might cover in a future one. But for now, just know that when we're talking about filters, use convolution. Alright, shut up and flip it and let's get back to the method. Now let's say we want to do convolution on this part of our image. We can say that each element inside the kernel is a weight. A weight for each pixel in the selected area where we are applying convolution on the image. We multiply the weights to the pixel value in each corresponding location, add them up, and generate a weighted sum. We take this weighted sum and output it onto a new empty image. And most of the time, if the kernel is symmetric, we output it to the same coordinates as the center of the kernel. And of course, you can program your filter so that it outputs the weight to somewhere else. 
we repeat convolution for every possible spot on the image where the kernel fits entirely, generating a filtered image as it shows on screen. Now let's demonstrate with the real kernel. And what we have here is a nine element mean filter. We can use the MATLAB function imfilter, applying our kernel to the image i, and specify that we want to use convolution. And this MATLAB function will perform convolution on every possible spot on the image for us, generating the filtered version of our photo. Now let's examine our new image. For better visualization, let's white out every 255 on both images, because we know they are basically the white pixels. And you can see that the main filter has a spreading effect on the pimples, and it also makes the color lighter. If we display this using the image show function on MATLAB, things start to make sense. Now if we apply this filter to the entire photo, this is how it looks. You can see that the sharp edges are getting blurry. As for the pimples, the overall shade is lighter, but because of the spreading effect, it's kind of worse than the original. But you know, whatever. You should love her for her brains and her heart, and not because of her face. Don't be a superficial asshole. But if she doesn't have a nice butt though... Awww... Next up, we're gonna talk about different types of filters and kernels. And we're gonna talk about convolution versus correlation. And maybe even more advanced, we're gonna talk about image feature detection. And even more advanced than that, we're gonna talk about how to seduce your professors. And we're gonna talk about how to end world hunger. And last but not least, I'm gonna teach you how to cure hemorrhoids. And as always, for all of the above, no guarantees.